The jungle is no doubt a place of mystery, and if you watch The Jungle Book, it's also a place of talking orangutans and bears. We as people often try and find friendly aspects of the jungle, even though there's plenty of other things that go on in these dark and dense places that are a whole lot creepier than we like to imagine. From the fungus that can control minds, to the tree that breathes just like you and me, here's the 20 creepiest jungle discoveries ever made. <sighs> Number 20. Mind Control Fungus – Zombie Parasite Takes Over Insects Through Mind Control don't look to science fiction to find the most scary examples of mind control out there. I'm Mentok, the mind taker! Instead, all you gotta do is travel to a tropical country like Brazil and go deep into the jungle. Next, find yourself a leaf that's around 25 centimeters above the forest floor. And now, look what's under it. If you're lucky, you might find an ant with its jaws clamped tight to the leaf's central vein. But for this ant, life is over. Because the zombie ant fungus, Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, is in charge of its body now. When the fungus gets into a carpenter ant, it grows through the insect's body and takes over its brain. It makes the ant leave its safe nest and climb a nearby plant stem over the course of a week. It stops the ant at a height of about 25 centimeters, which is right where the fungus can grow because of the temperature and humidity being just right in that spot. It makes the ant's jaws stay permanently locked around the leaf. At the end, it sends a long stalk through the ant's head, which grows into a bulbous capsule full of spores. Because the ant usually climbs a leaf that hangs over the foraging paths of its colony, the fungal spores will fall on its brothers and sisters below and turn them into zombies too. Whoa! Mushroom zombies! Now tell me that that's not the darkest thing in all of nature. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. Now, here's a pretty amazing image from the past. In this photo, we see a British explorer from the 1930s that was heading to New Zealand. But on the way there, his ship ran aground on a strange island. He had two guides with him, as we can see here standing in the middle. These guys were from Papua New Guinea and knew these strange islands a little bit, it turned out. But they weren't too keen to go exploring because of the critter on the far right. They were terrified of him, in fact. It's thought by some that this is a kind of hominid which had been living here in peace totally unknown. And it turned out he was really chill and happy to meet the strangers and pose for a photograph. But then, he disappeared, and we heard no more about him for at least a hundred years. What happened to this guy? Are there other hominid species that are still out there today? Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Breathing Tree a scary video of a tree breathing has shown up on the internet recently. Several people on social media are just scratching their heads over the strange video of the heaving tree, trying to figure out what the heck could be going on. Have you ever seen something so damn strange that you wouldn't believe it even if you saw it? Well, now you know how I felt when I first saw this clip. The event happened in Calgary, which is in Canada. There was a ton of rain and strong winds in Calgary at this time. During a rain and windstorm, the ground gets wet, which loosens the soil's hold on the roots at the same time that the wind blows on the tree's crown. While the force of the wind tries to push the trees over, the force gets transferred to the roots, and the ground starts to heave. Okay, maybe that is kinda epic. It's a battle between the wind and the roots, and the air and the earth. It seems to have been won by the forces on Earth, though, because here the tree is, it's still standing. Which is pretty good news for the tree, but if you're still sad that this great video doesn't show a forest breathing, remember that trees do actually breathe by replacing carbon dioxide in the air with oxygen through a process called photosynthesis. The soil also breathes, but in a little bit more of a strange way. Tiny microbes that live underground eat the CO2 that plants store in their roots and dead leaves. These microbes then release CO2 back in the air. So there you have it, forests do breathe, but just not like in the way that you might be imagining where it's super easy to see. Number 18. A 36 foot long humpback whale has been found dead in the Amazon. Researchers aren't sure what happened to a dead humpback whale that was found in the Amazon jungle in Brazil, near where the Amazon River starts to flow. It definitely wasn't supposed to be here, though that much is certain. 
The whale was found in Sore, Brazil's Maharo Bay, about 15 meters from the shore of Araruna Beach. Officials in the area say that it's pretty rare to see a whale in this area at that time of year. The Brazilian environmental group Bicho de Agua says that the whale weighed 10 tons and was 8 meters long. The local government, on the other hand, said that it was a bit bigger, putting its length at 11 meters. The Municipal Secretariat of Health, Sanitation, and Environment in the area said that the body didn't seem to have any obvious wounds, so it's unclear what caused the blubbery boy's sad demise. Most people think that the whale ended up in the jungle in one of two ways. Either a sudden strong tide pushed the whale onto the land, or people pulled it onto land after it drowned in the water for some reason. What do you think brought this whale to a rainforest? Number 17. Boiling River Peruvians have been talking about a river in the Amazon that runs so hot it can kill people for hundreds of years. The story goes that Spanish conquistadors made the mistake of going into the rainforest to look for gold. The few men who made it back told stories about poison water, snakes that ate people, and a river that boiled from the bottom up. And it turns out, they were telling the truth. Since he was a child, Peruvian geoscientist Andres Ruzo has been interested in this exact story. But he didn't start to wonder if the river was actually real until he was working on his PhD project about how geothermal energy could be used in Peru. The water in the boiling river is in fact simple rainwater as shown by chemical tests. Ruzo now thinks that the heating process happens far upstream, maybe even in the Andes Mountains, and that the water is heated by the Earth's geothermal energy as it seeps down into the ground and flows downstream. It ends up in the Amazon River, where the water's boiling. This means that the system is part of a huge hydrothermal system, and it's never been seen anywhere else on Earth. Number 16. Lost City of the Monkey God Found in Honduras Jungle Local legend says that an ancient city called La Cuidad Blanca, or the White City, is hidden deep in the Honduran rainforest in the northeast. Its name comes from the large white stone pillars that Spanish colonists and later Western explorers are said to have seen. It's said that a pre-Columbian civilization built the city to honor a monkey god. That's pretty cool. Explorers have been looking for a white city in vain for nearly a century, but in 2015, a group of scientists who went deep into the jungle in the La Muscatia region of Honduras found what might be the ruins of this city. Using information from previous expeditions, ground surveying satellites, and laser scans, they found structures and artifacts that had been hidden by the very thick jungle. This helped them learn about an ancient indigenous culture that could be more than a thousand years old. La Muscatia region covers more than 1,350 square miles and is one of the cleanest lowland rainforest areas in Central America. It's also one of the most important places for biodiversity in all of Honduras. Scientists use a method called light detection and ranging, or LIDAR, to look at a large depression in the forest surrounded by mountains. This gave him more information about where the ancient city could be. But was this really the mythical white city where stories about monkey gods and lost treasures came from? It really could be, and the thick jungle cover probably still hides the remains of other fascinating ancient civilizations. Number 15. Abandoned Fairy Tale Boot House. Most of us think of fairies as teeny tiny little creatures with feathery wings and magic wands, but history and folklore tell a very different story. When it was common to believe in fairies, most people didn't like to call them by their real names. Instead, they were called the little people or the hidden people. People thought they lived in homes just like this one found in the jungle. Could this really be a house for fairies? There have been a ton of theories about why people believe in fairies. Some people say that they're like ghosts or spirits of the dead, or that they were once angels who fell from heaven. The historian Gervase of Tilbury was the first person to write about fairies in England. He did this in the 13th century. There are also guardian fairies such as brownies and other hobgoblins. They're helpful and do things around the house like housework or odd jobs. And the truth is, fairies are still real to some people. As late as 1962, the wife of a Somerset farmer told how she got lost in the Berkshire Downs and was led back to the right path by a small man in green who suddenly appeared at her elbow and then vanished. So are fairies real? Is this fairy house evidence of them? Tell us what you think. Number 14, Walking Palm Trees. 
So, can trees walk? Some people say that this one kinda does. Some folks claim that just like the Ents in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings saga, a certain palm tree moves slowly across the forest as new roots grow and move it. Socratia exoria is a palm that grows naturally in the tropical rainforests of Central and South America. The tree is said to walk from shade to sunlight by sending out new roots in the direction that it wants to go, and then letting the old roots rise up and die. Some people say that it could take a few years, but a paleontologist says that the trees move as much as two or three centimeters every day. Rainforest guides have been telling the story of walking palm trees for years. In 1980, John H. Bodley was the first scientist to notice this particular phenomenon. The roots of the walking palm grow out from the base of the tree, several feet above the ground. But this is very different from other trees whose roots are all underground. As the soil wears away over time, some of these roots die, and then the new ones grow in their place. The truth is, scientists are still learning a lot more about the walking palm and its unusual root system. Some people think that the tree's roots make it more stable in wet places. Others think that the stilts roots let the palm grow taller to reach the light without having to make the stem wider. This means that the palm needs less biomass in its underground roots than other palms. So, if you see a tree slowly creeping up on you, now you know why. Number 13. Real Life Tarzan A man who lived alone with his father and brother in the forests of Vietnam for 41 years didn't even know that women existed. Since his discovery, people are calling him the real Tarzan. When a U.S. bomb tragically killed his mother and two siblings at the end of the Vietnam War in 1972, Ho Van Lang ran away from civilization. Lang made his home in the Tay Tra district of Quang Nhai Providence, which is deep in the jungle. Over the course of 40 years, they only saw five other people, and each time they did, they ran away. The three men lived off of honey, fruit, and animals that they caught in the forest. They also built shelters and took care of themselves. In 2015, a photographer named Alvaro Cerezo found the family. They were taken from where they lived alone to a nearby village where women live, which was a big surprise to Ho Van Lang, who was too young to remember them from the time that they lived in civilization. About eight years after he and his father, Ho Van Than, came back to civilization, Ho Van Lang sadly died. Cerezo said in a statement that Lang probably died because of all of the things that come with modern life, like processed foods that are full of chemicals. Some of the father's language skills had stayed with him, but Lang could only say a few words in the local core language, and it goes to show that even a hard life in the jungle can be healthier than eating processed foods, I guess. Number 12. Lost City of Giants in Ecuador in 2012, a group of explorers and researchers found what they thought was an ancient pyramid complex in a remote part of the Ecuadorian Amazonian jungle that most people outside of the country and even within the country didn't even know about. Bruce Fenton, an author and researcher, thinks that the complex may be the lost city of the giants. It was given this name because giant-sized tools were found nearby, and local legends say that giant humans used to live in the area. Fenton thinks that this is one of the lost cities of the giants because of how big the tools are. These cities are told about in Ecuadorian legends about the Amazonian area. The indigenous people of Ecuador are very afraid of these kinds of places because they think they're protected by guardian spirits or beings from another world. Local stories say that the giant people once lived in cities that have been forgotten by history. In fact, giant people's bones have been found in caves nearby and in other parts of Ecuador. So what the hell happened to these giant people? We very well may never know, but we can begin to piece together their story a little bit more now. Number 11. Wild Goliath Tarantula Spiders are some of the most feared animals on Earth. Most spider species don't actually hurt people, but there's a few that you should be very afraid of. The Goliath bird eater spider is the biggest spider in the whole world. It can weigh up to half a pound, and it's got legs that can be up to 12 inches long. It lives in the Amazon rainforest, and I know I've already said it, but it's the biggest spider in the whole world. It's a type of tarantula, and it lives in tunnels on the floor of the rainforest. People say that you can hear the thudding of their feet as they walk through the forest at night looking for worms. Even though they're called bird hunters, they actually don't do that very often. However, there have been stories about them catching hummingbirds, and they also hunt snakes, lizards, and rodents, which they eat mostly in private. 
Instead of eating their food in the open where they caught it, they drag it back to their burrow, inject it with chemicals that make the organs all mushy, and then they just suck the liquid out of them. Gross! It's like a nasty living organ jamba juice. Number 10. Sentinel Tribe. The Sentinelese are a group of people who live on the North Sentinel Island in the Bay of Bengal in India. They're also called the Sentinelli and the North Sentinel Islanders. As an official scheduled tribe according to Indian law, they're called a particularly vulnerable tribal group and they're part of the Andamanese people. The Sentinelese are in fact one of the six native peoples of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, like the great Andamanese, Jarwas, Onge, Champen, and Nicobarse, they often stay hidden from the outside world. The Sentinelese, on the other hand, didn't seem to want to talk to anyone from the outside world. They don't like people from other places, and they've killed anyone that tries to land or come close to the island. I'm sitting over here and knowing what I know about history and I'm, I'm just like, can you blame them? In 1956, the Indian government made North Sentinel Island a tribal reserve and made it hard to get within three nautical miles of the island. It also keeps an armed guard on duty all the time to keep invaders away. It's even against the rules just to take pictures of them. No one knows how many people are in the group either. Estimates range from 15 to 500, but most are between 50 and 200. Doesn't it kind of blow your mind to think about a world full of airplanes and iPhones and there's still people out there who don't know about the most basic technology or even the existence of the outside world at all? I'd love to know what you guys think. Should we leave them alone or introduce them to the joys of Twitter, Burger King, and the Kardashians? Number 9. Biggest flower in the world, Rafflesia arnoldi. The biggest flower in the world was discovered on this plant in Sumatra. But don't take too long to sniff it because another name for this bloom is the stinking corpse lily. Charming, and it smells just like a dead body, which is exactly what you'd be if you ate some of this disgusting beauty. The stinking corpse lily only blooms once every 10 years, and it only stays in bloom for about a day. People from all over the world come to see it and are very excited about it. Everyone who sees it seems to be both simultaneously mesmerized and incredibly grossed out. Not only does it look like raw meat, but it also smells like dead rat, which turns people off even more. It turns out this bad smell is actually caused by a mix of over 30 chemicals that make the same smell as rotting flesh. And this is just another example of how smart nature is. Insects cannot resist rotting things, so these stinky flowers call them from far and wide, spreading the flower's genes all over the rainforest where it lives and grows. Since it's unknown when it'll bloom, seeing the world's biggest, smelliest, and most mysterious plant is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. You'll need to go to Malaysia to see the stinking corpse lily. You can find it in Sarawak's Gunning Gading National Park, Sabah's Mount Kinabalu, and the Rafflesia Forest Reserve near Kota Kinabalu. And bring a clothespin for your nose, you won't regret it. I actually have a little insider secret for you on this one. If you don't have time to go all the way to Malaysia, maybe you can get yourself to San Francisco. The San Francisco Conservatory of Flowers has one of these bad boys, and if you look up when it's gonna bloom and time it just right, you can get to see one of these things in America. <laughs> Funny I said see and not smell, because smell is definitely the part that you're gonna remember when you walk away from this thing. Number eight, large stone spheres. The Dequists lived in the valley of the Rio Grande de Taraba. They were known for having developed some amazing and complicated social, economic, and political systems. The Dequis reached the height of their culture between 800 and 1500 AD. During this time, Dequi artists made intricate ceramic, bone, and gold objects, and they carved stone spheres in important parts of their settlements. Stone spheres were also lined up in public plazas and on the paths that led to the chieftain's homes. The diameters of the Dequi spheres range from a few centimeters to more than two meters. They were made by using harder rocks to pound boulders into rough spheres. The stone was then finished by polishing its surface with sand. This must have made for a pretty tripping but amazing looking place. We don't really know for sure what the exact purpose the spheres served was, but they were important symbols for this mysterious people. Sadly, the Dequi declined after colonization and the spheres were forgotten. 
but the United Fruit Company found them again in the 1930s when they were clearing the jungle to make room for banana plantations. Which is kind of cool in a way, but also incredibly sad that their jungle home was completely destroyed. Number 7. World's largest peatland with vast carbon sink found in Congo. A huge area of peatland in the middle of the Congo Basin has been mapped for the first time to show its full size. These peatlands store a lot of carbon, so keeping them around is definitely important in the fight against global warming. But a lot of the peatlands are now in danger, especially because oil is being extracted from them by major petrochemical companies. Peat is a type of partially broken down plant material. When trees and leaves and roots die, they can't break down because the swamp is always wet. Instead, they just slowly build up a layer of peat. The peat acts as a carbon sink because it stores the carbon that plants make as they grow. If peatlands dry out, for example because of land use changes, peat can start to break down again, which sends the carbon back back into the air. A group of international scientists found these huge peatlands in the central Congo Basin. These peatlands cover 16.7 million hectares, which is more than five times the size of Belgium. In some places, the peat can be as deep as 6.5 meters. Researchers have found that these peatlands store between 26 and 32 billion tons of carbon, which is about equal to what the world's fossil fuel emissions would be for three years. There are 36% of the world's tropical peatlands in the central Congo Basin, and 28% of the world's tropical peat carbon is stored there. The bad news is that the land belongs to the Congolese government now, and they immediately put them up for auction to the highest bidding oil company, who's going to release all of this carbon just in the hunt for new oil. Number 6. El Mirador, Guatemala, the ancient lost city of the Maya. From 300 BC to 150 AD, up to 80,000 people lived in El Mirador, which was ruled by the 72-meter-tall Danta Pyramid, which was the tallest structure the Maya ever built and the world's largest pyramid full stop. The fact that the ruins can only be reached on foot, by horse, or by helicopter, the nearest road is 60 kilometers away, makes them even more interesting. Even better, the site is in the large Maya Biosphere Reserve, which is part of the Mirador Basin, and full of ruins. This is one of the most ecologically diverse places in the whole world. It's home to jaguars, pumas, giant anteaters, scarlet macaws, and hundreds of plants and trees that are exclusively found here. A man named Claudio Orutida did a survey of part of the Mirador Basin in 1885, and he found some ruins there. But El Mirador didn't get much attention until 1962 when Ian Graham stayed there for a while and made the first map of the area. This large group of pre-classic Maya cities in Mesoamerica is in danger because of the destruction, looting, and loss of trees caused by equipment to build logging roads, which makes it easier for people to move into the area. In the far north of Guatemala, in the Paten region, there's a place called Mirador Basin. It's known for its many sites, many of which were among the largest and oldest in the Maya world. Today, only 14 of the 26 known sites have been studied. It's thought that there's another 30 sites still out there to be found. But if the scholars wait too long to get there, they may already be stolen due to the intense looting by bandits in the area. Ooh, bandits in the area sounds a lot like a group of people who are native to the area. And I guess I don't know how I feel about when we call the natives taking their ancestors stuff bandits. I just wish the people who end up with the stuff share their discoveries and images with all of us. Number five, Cucaina tricholoma. Cucaina is a genus of cup fungi in the family Sarcosophisae. Members of this genus can be found in tropical and subtropical parts of the world. Species can be found on the trunks, branches, and sometimes even on the fruits of certain trees. Some species in this genus are used as food by the Temmalans of peninsular Malaysia, but I have no idea how they like their mushrooms. Maybe with bacon and hash browns? Sounds tasty. Others are used as bait for fishing by rubbing them against the hook. Species in the cocaina have fruiting bodies, or apothecia, that are deep and cup-shaped or funnel-shaped. The inner surface of the body that holds the spores, called the hymenum, is brightly colored, ranging from yellow to red. However, the color does fade as the surface dries. Less bright colors are visible on the outside marking, and this is a pretty trippy-looking mushroom. Number 4. Potu. 
The giant potu is a bird that can turn itself into a tree trunk. It can look like almost anything, in fact. It's a master of disguise. It's pretty hard to believe that this bird is real when you see it. Or maybe I should say, if you see this bird. It's called the Muppet Bird, because it's got a big head, big beak, and big eyes that make it look like one of those funny puppets from that old TV show. But if you're traveling through the forests of South and Central America looking for this bird, you'll need to have a very sharp eye to spot this species. They have gray and brown spots on their feathers that look like tree bark. This means the potu can sit on a tree branch, squint its eyes until they're completely covered, and then just go about its business as usual. This bird is very cool. The potu makes the feathers on its head look like a broken branch so it can be a little more private. Then when it spots something that it wants to eat, it just grabs it with its huge beak. And it's down in one big gulp. Number three the lost city of Sigiria. An old rock fortress known as Sigiria lies near the downtown of Dambula in Sri Lanka. In the 5th century, King Kashyapa chose this 660 foot tall rock column as the site for his new capital city. On top of the rock is the king's palace, which has colorful paintings on the walls. A giant lion-shaped gate stands at the entrance. Even though there was a lot of cool stuff in this palace, it seems like no one else cared much about it. And when the king died, the whole palace was abandoned. Buddhist monks who wanted a quiet place to hang out took it over, and they stayed there until the 14th century. After this, the site seems to have been left in ruins until 1830 when British explorer Major Jonathan Forbes found it again. Archaeological work started almost right away, but it wasn't until the 1980s that this wonderful place was really dug up and found. Today, it's one of Sri Lanka's most popular tourist destinations. Number 2. Hiro Onoda in December of 1944, during the last few months of World War II, a Japanese lieutenant named Hiro Onoda was stationed in Lu Bang, a small island in the Philippines. Within a few weeks of his arrival, a US force attacked Japanese soldiers and forced them into the jungle. Onoda, however, hid on the island for nearly 30 years, longer than any of his fellow soldiers. In fact, a lot longer. In 1959, the Japanese government determined that he was dead, but in fact, he was still alive and still fighting the war even. He was on a secret mission that told him to hold the island until the Imperial Army came back. He thought the war was still going on the entire time. When Onoda came back to Japan in 1974, he was greeted as a hero. He was the last native Japanese soldier to come home from the war. And his memoir, which came out soon after, was a big hit. Number 1. Son Dong Geological changes over millions of years have made San Dong the world's largest natural cave. It has a lot of interesting natural secrets to offer us. San Dong Cave is part of the Fong Na Ke Bang Cave Complex. It's in the commune of Sun Trach, district of Bo Trach, province of Quang Bin, Vietnam. Scientists think that San Dong Cave was made between 2 and 5 million years ago. It's at least 6.5 kilometers long, 200 100 meters high and 150 meters wide. A piece of the roof on San Dong Cave fell in a long time ago, and this is what makes it such a special place. The huge hole now lets light in and allows trees to grow. This created a beautiful view with a forest in the middle of a cave. It's totally unique. Explorers call this place the Garden of Eden. You can understand why. Would you ever want to go exploring in the jungle? Do you think there are still more undiscovered tribes out in the jungle? Do you think there's more people still fighting the war in there? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.